Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and servers from Munich. Today, I want to do a little orchid spotlight on my overall favorite orchid, the Sedirea japonica. I will give you some bits of information on its origin and my experience with this Japanese diva that I made over the last year. Sedirea japonica, as the name suggests, is an epiphyte indigenous to Japan. To be precise, to the mountainous subtropical regions of southern Japan, like the island of Okinawa. But they are also living in Korea and on the Ryukyu Islands. A little trivia on the name. Sedirea is Eridis, spelled backwards. When they were first discovered, they were classified as Eridis. Its Japanese name is Nagoran. Ran means orchid, and as far as I found out, Nago is the name of a city on Okinawa. As you may know, uh, Sideria has been reclassified again and thrown into the Phalaenopsis genus. I'll ignore that, because according to Marlow Orchids, um, that's their website, the taxonomists in the East lumped it in with Hygrochylus or Hygrochylus. So in some way, I guess you are always doing it wrong, so who cares. And Sedirea is prettier anyway. Now, what do we learn from its natural habitat? Well, the climate is somewhat subtropical there with a maritime touch, so it sure likes some warmth and moisture. And by it I mean, of course, the plant, not the climate. <laughs> But mountainous regions tell us that they are found at higher elevations, where it doesn't get as hot as at sea level. On the other hand, it sure cannot take frost, so it wouldn't be a good idea to keep it outside, for example here in Germany. Still, given that uh, Japan and Korea are a good bit away from the equator, a sidereia in the wild sure experiences some kind of seasons that vary in the overall temperature, a warm summer and a, a bit cooler fall and winter. Since they grow in the gr crowns of trees, they are shaded from direct sun. Now for the grower that means intermediate to warm tem temps during the growing season and overwinter overwintering it in a cooler, bright place. As far as light is concerned, as bright as possible, but no strong sun. They surely don't experience drought in the wild, so keeping them constantly hydrated during their growing season is important. For that reason, a moisture retentive medium is recommended. Fine bark with a good amount of moss would be a good choice, especially if you are growing them in a dry house environment, like me. Um, from my own experience, I can tell you that they don't appreciate to dry out too much. Of course, the medium should dry a bit before the next watering, but it should not stay dry for a prolonged amount of time. The smaller of my two plants, this here, has grown two leaves during the last summer that are quite a bit smaller than the older ones. See, this is... I don't know about 7 centimeters, whereas this uh, should be well over 10, which is not how it should be, but yeah, it, uh, as I, s I, it was in two cores of a mix, so it didn't get hydrated enough, so that wasn't too good, and those smaller leaves are a telltale sign that the plant wasn't happy when growing them. So this year I'm growing them in a mix of lots of sphagnum moss and a bit of fine bark. The moss is only very loosely put around the roots and into the pot to ensure sufficient ventilation. Also I kept the moss and thus the moisture away from the base of the from the base of the plant to prevent stem or crown rot. The traditional Japanese way of potting is the so-called kokedama, which basically translates into a moss ball. And that's what it is, an artistically made ball of sphagnum with the plant on top 
which is then placed in a decorative ceramic pot. You might know that kind of potting from Neofinetia falcata, another Japanese orchid, which is actually on my wish list. really want to have one. As soon as I have some money again. Oh well. Now, during the winter, they experienced very cool temperatures in my kitchen due to those shitty windows that let cold air in like an open barn door. It got down to 8 degrees during a very cold weather period and basically they survived it quite swimmingly. When it comes to species orchids in general, Sedirea japonica seems to be quite a resilient one and can be kept and flowered on a bright windowsill without too much fuss. Last but not least to the most important part, the flowers. As you can see, those two little plants are both in spike and the smaller one was in flower when I bought it last May, I think. Here's a picture of its bloom display before mealybugs ruined it. God, I hate those useless creatures. Won't happen again. I uh, meticulously check every plant since then. You won't find no living mealybug in here. Okay, rant over. <laughs> um, the base color of the blooms is a very fresh cream color with wine red barring on the petals and purple spotting on the lip. There are different varieties. Mine is one of the more delicate and brighter ones. There are others that are much more heavily barred and spotted. And a really good thing about them flowers is their, ab their absolutely delicious fragrance. A very fresh, citrusy and yet sweet fragrance that I absolutely adore. It is quite strong. You do not have to stick your nose into um, the flowers to smell it. And I imagine if you have a mass blooming in a small space, it could actually hang, in hang around in the room which would be awesome, but I don't think I will get to this point. So that was basically it for my ser sermon about Sedirea Japonica. I hope that in a few weeks time I can show you a nice bloom display from my two little beauties here. And at the end, just a common white fell, but those blooms are also very very pretty I think. So, hope you like this little orchid spotlight and have a nice day and week and maybe see you next time. Bye bye.